Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. It is the deadliest one-man massacre in American history, yet already among the most forgotten. It's been just a month since Stephen Paddock killed 58 people in Las Vegas. For weeks, we've been asking basic questions about what happened, most of which remain unanswered tonight. What was Paddock's motive for the shooting? How did authorities possibly allow his house to be burgled? Why was Paddock's computer hard drive missing? And why did it take so long for us to learn it was missing? Why did security guard Jesus Campos travel to Mexico just days after the shooting, despite being a key witness? And why did authorities refuse to talk about that? Why have Campos' subsequent appearances been so closely managed by his employer, MGM? And more than anything, what's the actual timeline of this shooting? What happened and when did it happen? And why in the world is it still so hard to get a straight answer about that? Well, to these long-standing questions, we can add a few more tonight. Why did we only learn today from the Clark County Sheriff that Paddock's girlfriend could be withholding important information in this case? If, in fact, she knows more than she's saying, why isn't she being interviewed right now? We also discovered today that a police officer accidentally fired his gun in Paddock's hotel suite on the night of the shooting. How did that happen? Guns don't often accidentally discharge, they're accidentally fired. What exactly were the circumstances of this firing? Now, we're not trying to push a wild conspiracy theory here. It's possible the Trilateral Commission was involved, but the more likely and, in fact, far more terrifying explanation is incompetence. The people running this case don't really know what they're doing. You hate to conclude something like that, but it's becoming hard not to, especially when you consider the Las Vegas case in its larger context. This is not the only federal investigation that has shaken public confidence recently. Consider some of the others. The FBI had Omar Mateen under surveillance for 10 months, and yet somehow didn't hinder his planning or execution of the Pulse nightclub massacre. The FBI was also apparently aware of New York City killer Seifulo Saipov, Fort Hood shooter Nadal Hassan, Boston bomber Tamerlan Tzarnaev, and a list of other killers, but failed to stop any of their attacks. How come? The FBI famously investigated Hillary Clinton's email server for more than a year, during which time, for some reason, the Bureau gave immunity to several top aides for no obvious reason and failed to tape record key interviews. Why is that? Speaking of emails, the FBI never examined the DNC's email server after it was supposedly hacked. Instead, they just accepted the claim of a private contractor employed by the Democratic Party that the hacking was the work of the Russian government. Why didn't one of the Bureau's many tech teams conduct its own investigation of a matter this important and politically sensitive? Meanwhile, in case after case, the FBI's supposedly incorruptible white-collar division has leaked sensitive details of current investigations to the press. How does behavior like that restore public confidence in federal law enforcement? It doesn't, of course, and it shouldn't. We have a right to be worried about the FBI. There is no more powerful federal agency in this country. They can read your email, they can root through your bank records, they can break down the front door of your house and arrest you in front of your children. Lying to them is a federal crime. We need to be absolutely certain the FBI is worthy of the power we give them. What is happening in Las Vegas right now is one of many reasons to wonder if they are.